Let's go back to Washington uh, and our panel now for a moment. Congressional Democrats are now blaming the White House for allowing AIG's million dollar bonuses. Senate Banking Chair Chris Dodd saying, quote, staff level people, he said, at Treasury, staff level people pushed him to add a loophole to the stimulus package and that they wanted him to make sure that these bonuses would be allowed to be paid out to AIG. Now, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden is expressing his frustration with the White House for refusing to support his amendment that would have blocked the bonuses. Let's bring in today's panel on this. Juan Williams is a Fox News contributor and senior correspondent with NPR. A.B. Stoddard is an associate editor with The Hill newspaper. And Jason Rowe is a former senior advisor to Mitt, Rom Mitt Romney's presidential campaign. But Juan, let me start with you. I I, this raises the the first question is, you know, if this is true, you know, now you've got Congress pointing the fingers at the White House, right? Chris Dodd yeah. said, well, I didn't want to put that language in there. In fact, I wanted to make sure they didn't get paid. But then I got a call from staff level people, uh, whoever they are at Treasury. We know they don't have a whole lot of tre staff over at Treasury these days right. uh, that made him do it. Why? Why would they? Why would the White House and why would Treasury be pushing for these bonuses to be allowed? Well, I think the obvious reason is they had larger uh, pickings on their plate, Martha. They they thought they needed to get this package through as quickly. And what you're hearing from the White House is, you know, we weren't focused on this, uh, and we thought that people on the banking committee were paying more attention to the details. Now, Dodd said one thing yesterday, and you know that he's changed his message today. And I suspect he's putting up a firewall. Same thing with Wyden. Same thing with Charlie Rangel on the House side. But Juan, they what don't the, want to take the heat. Let me back up though, because what was said, Juan, what Chris Dodd said last minute. The White House basically called the Treasury, the administration, he's not I saying know. exactly who, that they called and wanted the language inserted. So that doesn't imply that, oh, they didn't really know and they just wanted the bill to pass. That, that, that would be a, you know, a deliberate move. And I'm wondering who had their ear and who said, look, we've got to protect these folks. Well, wait a second now. Remember, Dodd said yesterday that, yes, that was his rider that got in the bill, but it wasn't his intent to allow for the bonuses. Now he's saying, well, other people were pushing him on it. So there's a little bit of wiggle room there. But I think what's clear is that from Dodd's perspective, there's too much heat on this, Martha, and he's not going to take it. He's going to point at Treasury. And I think from Treasury's perspective, again, they said, you know what, this is small pickings. This is a small percentage of the overall economy and the overall need to repair the damage being done to the economy. Yeah, A.B. Stoddard, you've got a lot of Democrats who seem to be wanting to distance themselves uh, from the White House. Let's pull up this call for her because it's a quote from Ron Wyden. Uh, the Oregon Democrat, and this is quoted from a Politico story, so the inside quotes are the Wyden quote. Uh, the Oregon Democrat credited President Barack Obama for being, quote, very blunt, very forthright, very strong on this issue, and they're talking about executive compensation bonuses, but but he said the president's economic team, and another sort of vague, we're not sure who he means exactly, has not followed up. And it is not acceptable to the American people. So you've got Democrats sort of pushing at arm's length uh, against the White House and against the economic team there. Well, I think Democrats have realized now that they own bailouts. I mean, they, they didn't before. For eight years, they could blame all, all our troubles on the other party. And then for the first eight weeks of this administration, they could. But they now officially own um, the AIG bailout, which is our biggest one, and others. And so um, this is a huge, obviously, a mess. And, and, and it is a problem, a political problem, for the White House. And Democrats who are looking at, you know, down an election 18 months from now are obviously looking out for themselves. And they believe they took power back in the Congress anyway because the Republicans had said yes so many times to President Bush, rubber stamped whatever he did, and, and gone over a cliff with him. And they believe that, therefore, um, you know, they sort of helped the president dilute the, the power in the legislative branch, and they're not going to do this. You will see them disagree publicly whenever they need to with the president, and this is obviously the worst issue they've had to face yet. Yeah, so Jason, let's look at the big picture. I mean, I think what a lot of folks see, they hear all this, you know, back and forth about millions and billions, but the takeaway could be uh, that things are in disarray. That, that there's not a strong leadership, uh, you know, that things well, aren't getting yeah. done. Yeah, well, I mean, you think about it. We just got done with eight years of Democrats accusing the Bush administration of being incompetent. And I don't know what in the first 59 days you point to in the Obama administration that screams competence. You know, his biggest accomplishment so far is overturning the uh, Bush administration's ban on federal funding of embryonic research. 
Uh, but, you know, when you think about the things, the challenges that our country faces right now, that that even be, was on the agenda in the first 100 days, I think speaks to where their priorities are. And neither the Democratic Congress or this administration have frankly impressed anybody or reassured them or given confidence to American people or financial markets. Yeah. Uh, one, you know, when you back away from the situation and you look at some of the relationships as well, it, it, it's raising some questions. Uh, you know, you look at Edward Liddy, who was on the board of Goldman Sachs with Henry Paulson, yeah. right? And Henry Paulson Paulson put Edward Liddy in charge of AIG. He said, look, you know, we need you to go fix this. He did an admirable thing. He said, yes, I'll go work with AIG. I'll try to fix the mess for a dollar. Uh, and then the man got grilled in front of Congress yesterday. Uh, but then, you know, you have, uh, you have Tim Geithner, who gets involved with negotiations with AIG, and he can't seem to get it done. I mean, he says, oh, I called Ed Liddy, and Ed Liddy said, you know, we can't do it. Sorry, uh, we can't do it because the lawyers say that we're going to get sued. Hard to believe that a company that got $170 billion from the government can, can sort of say to the Treasury Secretary, mm, sorry, buddy, I can't help you out here. It's unbelievable. I mean, I think that's the outrage that you're feeling all over, not only Washington, but all over the country. The government, the U.S. taxpayer, owns 80% of that company, and the guy can't get his costs returned. Right. I mean, that's pretty crazy. It's, it's, it's amazing. It, well, it's amazing, but what's amazing is something that you were just talking about, Martha. If you stop and look at all the people who are involved, remember Tim Geithner was head of the Federal Reserve in New York. Remember that if you think about uh, Paulson and his involvement with New York, all of them were involved in the initial decision to save AIG. They've all been involved in subsequent decisions to pump money into AIG. And it's like, wait a minute, these guys have been in it all along. Are they working for AIG or are they right. working for us? And it may, AB, you know, what about this? What looks to be a somewhat cozy relationship between the administration and some on Wall Street? I mean, you, you can take this further and talk about Goldman Sachs, how they got a t huge counterparty payout from AIG after saying that they weren't really exposed to a lot of these bad securities. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, we know that, that Timothy Geithner was chosen for this job, he, former head of the New York Fed, because of his expertise. He is the architect of the AIG bailout. And obviously it doesn't stand to reason that he didn't know when the Fed has known for months about the prospect of these bonuses. I mean, it doesn't, it just doesn't really pass the Do state Do you think he's going to be held there is a, to the fire on that? I mean, go ahead. I, I just want to know, do you think there's going to be a moment here, today, tomorrow, after that, when, you know, he's put in front of, of Congress or whoever, or anybody, you know, trusts at this point and says, did you or did you not know and when did you know? Well, he is going to go before the Financial Services Committee next week, and he will have to answer that question then. I think as, as it stands right now, because of the, the remarks that the president made yesterday, there is no Treasury Department, as we all know, except for Tim Geithner. So he's not going to dump him. President Obama is standing by him for now. We will see what happens in the coming days if there's a drumbeat calls for his resignation. He's obviously on thin ice, as House Minority Leader John Boehner put it yesterday, because of the questions over whether or not he could have either known about this or in some way preempted it, um, even if he couldn't get out of the contracts, if he could have yep. preempted this conversation. All right. All right. A.B., uh, thank you very much. Jason Rowe, thank you. Thanks. Juan Williams, many thanks. Uh, we are just in Chapter right. 2, uh, probably, of a very long book with all of this. So thanks, you guys.